Hi, in this tutorial we will go over how to make a collage in Photoshop using only three to four images. Before beginning, I do recommend doing a Google or Pinterest search for inspiration. So I have some images that I plan to use on my desktop here, and I've made sure they have good resolution, especially if I have taken them from online. For example, you can see that this one of space has low resolution, and if I plan to enlarge it in Photoshop, it will become pixelated. I'm going to use some of these images as I have an idea to create some type of surrealist collage. I'm thinking in terms of layers for background, middle ground, and foreground for my own composition. This can all vary depending on your intentions and what you wish to communicate or create. You could also consider taking a graphic design approach or other possibilities such as abstract, narrative, data, juxtaposition, symmetry, humor, or even inspiration from art history. So I'm going to open Photoshop and select my document type. You can select photo or art and illustration. I'm going to go with Art and Illustration and select the first preset here and manually type in 210mm for width and 297mm for height. This is International Paper or A4. It is also in portrait mode. So our document appears and if you look at the bottom corner here you can see the percentage view. Just for ease of the tutorial, go up here to Window, Workspace, and make sure your Essentials is selected. Today we are mostly going to be using the Layers panel. Next we want to import our photos onto this canvas or document. I'm going to drag my pics onto the dock here, or you can go to File, Import. You see it imports one image at a time. This X or boundary box appears over the image, and we hit Return to escape, and then the next image to import appears, and so forth. You notice that each image appears on a separate layer over here in the Layers panel. You can also name these layers to help avoid confusion at times. I don't need to do it as I named the JPEG files already. To do this though, just double click and enter your text and hit return. I'm going to select an image to work on, so I'm going to turn the view off by clicking the eye icons on the other layers. For this first image, you see it is small and you as well may need to increase or decrease the size for your image. To do this, I need to go into edit mode by clicking Command T to get the boundary box again. If I go to a corner, I can increase or decrease the size. Now there are a few ways to cut out depending on the effect and your patience level. I will show these and explain which method could work best for each type of photo. For this image, I'm going to use the polygon lasso tool. I like this method because it can be quick, but it works best for images with straight lines. We can still use it for curves, but we will just need to do more clicking. It kind of represents scissor cuts. I'm going to cut around this driveway area and sign. I need to see better, so I'm going to zoom in by hitting Command Plus. Select an area to start and click around the image area. If you want more gradual cuts, you need to click more. I'm going to speed up my video process now, so as not to keep you waiting. You need to make sure to go back to your beginning spot to close it. You see, once I get back to the beginning, a little circle appears. If you really want a cut feel, you do not need to worry about precision. This could work if you wish to do something similar to the collage work of Romare Bearden. Notice at the top, I have Feather set to 2. Simply select 1 or 2. Go up and click Edit from the menu bar, and then click Copy, and then click Paste. You can also use Command-C for Copy and Command-P for Paste. This places the object on a new layer, and if I turn off the original, you can see the result. I can delete the original if I wish, or simply leave it turned off. I'm also going to rename this layer. If I turn another layer back on, you get a hint at what it looks like. I am going to move the car layer above the other image as I want it in front. To move an image around, you need to use the selection tool and make sure you have selected the correct layer. Now for my second image, you can see I have an image with a solid background color. Because of this, I can use the background eraser tool. 
First I'm going to duplicate the layer, just as a backup in case I make a mistake, because this tool actually works in a destructive manner. I'm also going to turn off the original layer. To help me view my erasing easier, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer in the bottom right corner here, and select Solid Color. I then choose Black and hit OK. We will then move this adjustment layer underneath the image layer so we can see black as we erase the image above. We go into the Eraser Tool group and select Background Eraser Tool. Select the middle option up here called Sampling Once. If you get this Can't symbol, simply click and hit OK. We're going to start on an empty area of the photo. Adjust the size of your brush and make it a little soft by reducing the hardness. You see nothing is happening because I'm on the color fill layer. I'm actually erasing black if you see it in the panel. Make sure you are on the correct layer. How this works is that Photoshop reads the color in the middle of the crosshairs and erases that color on the image. I'm going to first focus on the edges and then speed up the video process as I go along. I will tidy up areas later if needed by using the normal eraser tool. Remember, we are seeing black because we selected a black color on the layer underneath. If I turn off the black layer, you can see the erasing that has been done on the image. You may need to go back and use the eraser tool to touch up any areas that look cloudy, or you can do this towards the end if required. The third way is to use the pen tool. I'm going to use it with my third image here that is round. I need to go up and select this box here titled Paths and make sure that it is selected. So depending on the style you want your collage to appear in, you can also go around with a rough cut similar to the polygon lasso tool shown earlier. I want to go around instead with a smooth cut. Since I want this to be done precisely, I'm going to zoom in on the image by clicking Command Plus. So I just select a starting point, click and then move along the image to the next point and click again. I hold this click though and these handles appear. I pull the handle by dragging the mouse following along in the direction of the cut or object. If you have an image that needs to change direction, I let go and hold the Option button. You see the arrow changes style. I then move this handle towards the direction I want to go in. I let go of it and then continue clicking and dragging along. When I get back to the beginning, I need to close the shape. You notice a circle appears. Now I go over near the Layers panel here and select Paths. Then I go down to the bottom to this dotted circle called Load Path as a Selection and click it. Then I go back to Layers and at the bottom of the panel I select this circle in a box icon called Add Layer Mask. When I click it, it deletes the outside area of my image. I'm going to go back into Edit Mode and increase the scale. I'll turn on another layer too to get some context on how it looks. So another tool that might be handy is just using the eraser tool. This can be used in addition to any of the tools mentioned earlier, or as a standalone. Just remember to adjust the size and hardness. A soft edge is useful for going around a human head. Since we have everything cut out, the next phase is arranging the composition. Some basic things to consider are layout and use of space. You can decide which image will go in the background by clicking and dragging the layers in the order of how you want them viewed, from the back towards the front. Remember, we can play with scale by using Command T to increase or decrease size. I'm going to turn on my layers and start experimenting with layout and arrangement. To move individual photos around, you need to make sure to select the correct layer. You're also welcome to explore repetition by duplicating a layer. It is also possible to reflect images by going to Image, Flip. When arranging your composition, the easiest design tactic to remember is perhaps the rule of thirds. But experiment. Once complete, go up to File, Export As, select JPEG, and click Export. 
Give it a title if you haven't already, and select your save destination. You can see I have played around here with composition, making some slight alterations and experimentations. What are you going to create? Good luck. Mr. CTV. Mr. CTV. Mr. CTV.